Good afternoon. This is Tom Connolly, president of Verson Capital Management. I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about some trends uh, going on and what's been going on in the marketplace, in, uh, investment marketplace, and um, spend a few minutes with you today. Uh, first of all, uh, a little bit on the COVID update. If if you've been reading and looking, you're probably as frustrated as I am trying to figure out where we are in the pandemic. There's all uh, things all the way from uh, uh, ongoing multi-wave infections for, for time immemorial to uh, herd immunity and um, uh, vaccines coming before the end of the year. It's hard to know where to come down. And there are scientists and knowledgeable people uh, from Stanford in one direction and the, most of the East Coast schools in the other arguing about whether we should open everything up or close everything down. I think the important thing to remember is the pandemic is a finite event and it will have a resolution at some point. I think mar the big comeback in the markets are saying that. Um, and even though now maybe there's a little bit of speculative froth in it because there are literally hundreds of thousands of accounts being opened up at places like TD, Schwab, uh, Robinhood of uh, retail traders that are driving stock prices on some companies to extremes, a lot like what we saw in the day trading phenomenon in the dot-com bubble in the late 90s. Uh, however, uh, that segment of the market, the technology segment, uh, prices have been going up way faster than underlying fundamentals in terms of earnings. And they're in some cases expense, as expensive as they were during the dot-com bubble. Other markets, the rest of the US market, the, the uh, 495 stocks, other than the five biggest ones, um, have not quite come back all the way uh, from the uh, COVID downturn, nor have a lot of the uh, foreign markets yet. Uh, interest rates have collapsed to the point where if you invest in 10-year treasuries, uh, your yield right now is about six tenths, a little less than six tenths of a percent. Uh, so we who saved during our working years um, are not really being rewarded uh, for our diligence in terms of retirement incomes, but that's another subject for another day. Um, against that, however, if that's our choice uh, as retirees and we look at dividend yields on stocks both in the U.S., which are over a percent and a half right now, but outside the U.S., they range from about 2.8 to 3.5 percent. And in Europe, interest rates are less than zero. And so the spread between income on stock markets, exclusive of earnings growth, just the income, is at a, a high that I've never seen in my career. Um, and and uh, a high that you don't see through most of history. And so equities still look like, stock, stocks especially abroad, still look like uh, relatively good deals. Um, however, bond markets, uh, where they might be useful for diversification, especially uh, treasury bonds and sovereign bonds in Europe, uh, the, what we earn on them is so low that if, how, how much further can interest rates decline if, and, and uh, bonds go up in value if interest rates decline? Uh, but the gain from that, possible gain, is relatively small if you go from six-tenths of a percent um, down to zero. Uh, there's a sizable gain, but you could go from six-tenths of a percent to six percent, and then the, bond, the loss on the bonds would be very high on the order of loss in a, a, bear, a stock market uh, downturn, a bear market. And so we believe the danger on bonds is asymmetric and dangerous for investors looking out five or 10 years. And that is indeed our time horizon uh, when we do our planning five or 10 years. The other thing to consider right now um, is that we have an ongoing recovery. Almost all the economic data we see is coming in a little bit better than expected uh, by the economists. We, the surprises are almost uniformly pleasant. Um, uh, so that's good news going forward. Uh, but we do know that some sectors, the cyclical sectors, are going to take longer to recover. 
So most of those sectors uh, are in what we call value stocks or cyclical stocks, financials, um, consumer cyclicals, industrials, and uh, those uh, stocks have come back, uh, but not as far as one might have guessed for economic recovery. We think in the long run those offer the best um, uh, prospects for future returns, and our client portfolios are preferentially tilted in those types of stocks uh, at this moment. Uh, so, so going forward, we have the prospect of recovery, which doesn't look like it's going to be a sharp V-shaped recovery right now, but it will probably take place over the next year or two or, th or possibly three. But on top of that, we have government stimulus in terms of spending and in terms of money printing or money creation by the Federal Reserve that is much greater than it was in 2008, 2009, or frankly, um, the spending's on the order of what it was in World War II, even though we're not fighting a world war, uh, and the debt is higher at this point. Uh, accumulation of national debt uh, is higher than it was uh, during World War II. And so one has to look at the next 10 years and think about what the consequences of these actions might be uh, for long-term portfolio success. When we create money uh, without economic growth associated with it. Uh, too much money chasing the uh, same amount of goods will historically result in less value for the money. Um, and we are also accumulating debt, both at the government level and the corporate level, not so much the consumer level this time around as it was in 08, 09. Um, but that, is a, that can't continue forever. And at some point, uh, historically, on average, about eight, when your debt is 80% of the size of your economy, you run into problems with restricting growth. Well, right now, we're about 120%, uh, in not just 80, but 120% here in the U.S. Um, Japan is on, on its way to 300%, uh, and Europe is, is in between. So there are huge debt burdens in the developed world uh, to overcome. When those burdens plus the promises to constituents in the term form of benefits prove to be too high, um, governments print money, end up printing money to cover the, the debts. So we believe that at the end of the day, most democracies are in our program, pre-programmed to produce inflation at some point because the constituents will always vote themselves more goodies than they can af uh, afford in a democracy. And so one of our key investment beliefs, that is one of our key investment beliefs, that the, our system is geared in the long run toward producing inflation. And so we have uh, a number of separate categories, one called inflation sensitive assets, to help hedge the portfolio against that possibility. And now appears to be one of those times when not only have we started printing money, we're deficit spending like we were in a world war, in a sense, we kind of are with the pandemic. Um, and interest rates have come down to a historical low. Uh, these are, this is an environment that's very different from what we experienced in the previous 10 years or the previous 30 years. And so we are attempting to diversify our sources of, of return and income in our portfolios by adding things like materials, resources, gold, um, reinsurance that aren't dependent on the type of environment that existed in the la that predominated over the last 30 years uh, to give us investment returns. In other words, we're divert trying to diversify our sources of return. So in summary, despite the fact that there's a huge run-up in some stocks, especially the growth stocks, we think many markets are sufficiently valued right now to give us returns, not necessarily double digit returns, but mid to high single digit returns over the next 10 years uh, without, too much, without stretching our assumptions too much. Um, we believe that the dollar will probably be in decline for a little bit of time, which is good for international stocks, 
good for inflation sensitive stocks. And we believe traditional fixed income are dangerous. And so we have different types of fixed income and perhaps even a little cash in lieu of those. So thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. And I look forward to talking with you again.